Hello, hello, and welcome to something different. Earlier in the week, I recorded some footage, or tried to record some footage, of me doing some fret work on a ukulele. The idea being uh, that I wanted to test out my video equipment and recording stuff before going in and starting the recording work for my great guitar build-off build. And I, I had this uh, Vivitar camera that had the benefit of being inexpensive and the drawback of being cheap, uh, which is pretty much the same story with this Campac Action Cam. It, it was supposed to be a, an inexpensive GoPro clone. Uh, I originally bought it to use as a webcam for when I started streaming a, a couple of years ago, and it turns out that the, the fitting on the USB port is uh, <clears throat> subpar, and the USB connector won't stay stay in such a way that it um, maintains a solid data connection. So I figured when this project came around, I figured, all right, let me let me use it here, and uh, well, you, you'll you'll see which footage I ended up using. Likewise, the the auto weight balancing on the Vivitar did not turn out as good as I had hoped. Um, I'm wondering if I changed the bulb and that light behind me and the bulb off camera in that direction uh, to, to throw off more of a white light instead of the off white that they have, if that might help, or, or uh, maybe if I change the overhead lighting, if that would help. I'm not sure, entirely sure where the problem is, but yeah, it comes out a little yellowish, and uh, my... <laughs> I, I, got, I got to dig this out. And my trusty old lavalier mic, complete with the Radio Shack logo. Kids, ask your parents. Um, it did not help me this go around. It was really, really quiet. I'm hoping that in the post-production process, I can volume bump it up to where I need it to be. Matter of fact, that's part of why I'm recording this new intro with my condenser, so I've got a reference point for where where I want the volume to be. Uh, <clears throat> so all that said is to forewarn you, I'm going to try to rescue as much footage I, as I can, and if nothing else, show that I am doing stuff towards the 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 building and the repair and and that kind of stuff, because it, it, so far, other than the announcement for the Great Guitar Build Off, my channel's been nothing but the the normal coffee craft and games revisited type content and I, I didn't want you thinking that I wasn't working on stuff so uh, it took a little while to get my bench set up my bench is now set up more or less for me to have a place to work um, I now know where I stand with lighting and cameras so what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to try repositioning the Vivitar so that way its lighting is in a little bit better place I do not like the fish eye that the cam pack provides, but I may put in a larger SD card and see if I can get it to work in. Oh, that's the other thing. Almost forgot. The other big problem with these two guys, they ran out of power and auto shut off a, uh, way too early. So I either need to turn them off and just turn them on when I'm shooting a specific moment in time so I won't be able to do any time lapses with them or anything like that uh, or I need to find some way to run power cables to them and, and since the cam packs in that uh, GoPro mount over my shoulder under under my Minecraft avatar painting um, that that doesn't have room to run a power cable in so I gotta find a an appropriate mount for that or not I, I might just take a camera mount and use my pixel because um, <clears throat> the camera on that's good enough or it's better I hope maybe I, I've also sorry that's the pixel 3a that I just held up I've also got my old pixel like the first generation Google pixel that had a really nice camera so I, I might just try to redo this using the two camera the two phones as cameras uh, the only problem with the old pixel being that the battery is nearly dead that's why I finally traded it in uh, well, didn't trade it in, but you, you know what I mean. Retired it. So as long as I can run a USB cable to keep that joker powered, I might be okay in that respect. All right, enough yammering. 
Uh, this is where I'm going to transition to what I was able to rescue for the footage. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Have fun. Hello, hello, and welcome to something different. Uh, I need to come up with an actual intro for this because so far on this channel, I've been doing that intro for Coffee Craft, my Let's Play Minecraft survival series that I do with Rayast and Arcadius and Medic. Um, I've been using that intro for Games Revisited, my playthrough of classic games, both uh, games that I played as a child and games that I missed along the way. Um, and now I'm getting ready to do some new stuff. I'm getting ready to do some repair videos, some build videos, and all sorts of other types along those lines. Starting with today's project. Let's turn over to my bench here. Um, camera angles are going to be a little wonky. I'll warn you about that right now because my bench looks like this. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna go over here to the bench where you see this lovely Mitchell ukulele that I have had for many, many years. Uh, I bought it on a lark and it might look a little sad and neglected because, well, it's a little sad and neglected. Um, I, I, I went to tune it back up, had some trouble with the strings staying in tune because they were the original strings when I bought it more years ago than I care to mention. So let's do this. I'm going to first treat the fretboard. Uh, Lizard Spit is not a sponsor of this channel, and uh, but if you want to be, uh, contact information, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, I keep uh, the cloth rubber banded around the bottle of chemical. Some chemicals you can mix and it won't be a problem. Some chemicals you can't mix or it will be a problem. Rather than relying on my unreliable memory, I just wrap the cloth that I used around there because if you treat them all like they don't mix, you'll either be right or pleasantly surprised. With that out of the way, let's get a little bit of this on the cloth and let's try to clean up the fretboard a little bit. You can use some other products, like Music Nomad makes various products, Daddario makes various products. Uh, I search around Amazon, you'll find a bajillion and two different fret conditioning products. You really should do this every now and again, uh, particularly when you change strings is an excellent time to do it because you're gonna have to take the strings off anyway and it gives you good access to clean out the fretboard here and there. All right, now. So I've rubbed in the lizard spit and you'll notice I've still got a little bit of some unfortunate stuff gunked up on the fingerboard. There's a couple of different ways you can do about that. You can use the old favorite, some steel wool, uh, triple lot, quadruple lot, or uh, finer. Uh, as you can see, I do like the quadruple lot. We use triple lot at the repair shop where I'm working these days for a variety of tasks. You can get some micro mesh paper. Um, you can find these in packs on Amazon. You can find them from specialty retailers that will be happy to charge you for their specialty services. Or you can go down to the local craft store. Uh, I picked up this pack from Hobby Lobby for about 10 bucks US dollars. Uh, you can find some around that. Oh, some a little cheaper, some a little bit more expensive. You, you might even be able to go to... Uh, uh, an almost craft store like Michael's and find them too. Uh, but you're going to take just a mild abrasive. Like I'm going to go ahead and grab the 3600, which is pretty much what I use on a lot of the violin fretboards to clean off the stuff, because um, you should be cleaning your fretboards, not the poor technician who has to deal with them later. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> And you could use that to sand off some of the gunkier bits. It's just mild enough that it'll pick up whatever is stuck on there without actually abrading the wood and creating all sorts of sand lines and that kind of stuff. So you're not taking off a bunch of material. Um, you can also get some emery boards from like TJ Maxx or Walmart or CVS, just don't steal your mother or wife's. They'll get mad at you about that. All right. 
So mostly clean. I'll, I'll come back and hit that later when I'm not recording. Now, one of the other things that I do want to do is I need to dress the ends. You see, uh, when you buy fretted instruments, occasionally what will happen is the wood on the fingerboard or fretboard will shrink and it'll create what is called fret sprout. The frets aren't actually sprouting, but they do start sticking out from the end of the fingerboard based from the wood shrinking, in which case, as you run your fingers down the fingerboard, it hurts. Uh, if it gets really bad, it, it can actually, uh, it can cut you. And while they say that you should bleed for your craft, they don't mean literally. They shouldn't mean literally. Uh, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a fret and dressing file from Stuart Mac. Stuart McDonald, Stumac, uh, worth the money. You're going to find that a lot of, hang on, real talk here for a second. You're going to find that people will give you all sorts of well-meaning and wonderful discount options for handling the tool situation for these sorts of tasks. <clears throat> I've done them. I, I, I've used many of them. However, uh, if you're going to do this more than just once every six months on your own guitars, invest in the proper tools. Uh, when you cheap out on some of the inexpensive files and, and the less expensive alternatives and try to, try to manufacture your own little kind of sort of sanding pencil type, maybe thingamajig, um, you're, you're taking a, a task and making it a little bit harder than it needs to be. Uh, in post-production, I'll put the current running price for one of these two Mac fret and dressing files. You can find some from some other brands that are about the same quality and plus or minus on the price. But you got to remember that one time purchase for an, ex an expensive tool is spread out over the course of all the times you're going to do this. If I was doing this just for myself, if I wasn't doing this for a living, this file would easily last me the next 20 years. So figure that in when you're looking at the cost of some of these tools and, and consider it's not a big purchase now, it's a big purchase that you're going to use over the course of the next 10 or 20 years as you take care of your instruments, because you are taking care of your instruments. All right. <clears throat> Back to our ukulele. One of the nice things about a fret and dressing file is it's got a rounded edge on the bottom to protect the fretboard. So that way, when you come in and you slowly work your way to rounding the edge of the files, I know, that's horrible. I'm still learning this. As you're going about rounding out the edges, so that way, as your finger comes up, and then we'll do it again on the other side so it comes down, and then we'll do it again on both sides on the other side of the fingerboard. Um, that rounded edge protects the wood and the binding so you don't scratch it up as you're doing this. You can get some hobby files, and this is a set that my sister used for a long time, and I used up until I got the Stu Mac file. You, you get a, a nice little set of needle files. It comes with a nice little handle. All the files are stored in the compartment in the bottom and you get a nice little holder there. And that actually works really good. You can get it at Micro Mart. Uh, I can't remember if it's Micro Mart or Micro Mart. Uh, I'll double check and actually have a proper link in the uh, description below that you can get these online. You can also find them in hobby stores, craft stores, and also Michaels, um, maybe if you're lucky. All right, so let me uh, hush now real quick and focus on making sure that I round these edges out a little bit. It doesn't take much, especially if you've got a decent quality file. This is where, this is where spending just a little bit extra on your tools will help you. As you get closer to the end of the fingerboard, fretboard, I keep bouncing back and forth. I've been working on violins and violas all day. So they have fingerboards because they don't have frets. This is a fretboard because it does have frets. As you get closer to the body so you don't scratch up the finish, you do want to take some tape. I've got some of the 3M Delicate Surface Tape. I probably should have 
get the packaging on to show the camera. Hindsight, 2020. Not not the year, uh, the vision. The 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 year we can all we can all forget. Never happened. It's amazing. We went from 1990. Uh, never mind. <clears throat> A few minutes later. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to polish up the frets a little bit while you have them nice and active. You can do a variety of things. You can use the old steel wool, which I used for many, many years. Um, you can get a little kit like these Diderio uh, polishing system kits. The nice thing is, is these, if you're just doing this for your own guitars as part of your own self-care or ukuleles or whatever fretted instrument as a part of your own self-care, then these are really good kits to get because they've got these little cardboard templates in them. And these cardboard templates can be used for about three, four uses. Well, they say five. I, I've, I've used the cardboard templates before. I've made my own cardboard templates before because, well, I couldn't really, I didn't really see the need to invest in much. Foolish me. Um, <clears throat> you can also use micro mesh, which is what I've been doing for the last couple of years now. And again, you can get these kits from a hobby store online, various places that will run you right through the, the grits. Just make sure you do something like get some fret guards. Where you, you can find a bunch of kits. Stumac sells some high quality kits that are a little pricey for what you're getting, but they are high quality and you don't have to worry about uh, what I'm about to talk about. These are not high quality Stumac kits. This is where I thought I could save a buck and get a, a less expensive Amazon special. But with a lot of the, the, the less expensive ones that you find, even though they are metal and they will last you a long, long time, they're, they're laser cut and these edges are a little rough. So when you put them on here and start applying force, the, the flat edge of these fret guards will actually bite into the wood and scratch the wood. So if you do end up getting the less expensive ones, just uh, make sure you come back with a file or some sandpaper, like an emery or even an emery board and, and round off all the edges that are going to touch the wood of your guitar's fretboard. So let me do that right now because I didn't realize that until I had already cut up a fretboard lessons learned okay there we go so all that is is to protect your fingerboard from the various abrasives that we're going to be running across it whether it's something out of the kit system whether it's your steel wool or your micro mesh and i'm just going to start working my way up through the grit starting with the 3200 actually i don't need to start with the 3200 i can start with the 3600 and we're just going to do a couple of passes along remove all the sorry I'm trying to figure out how to do this well and show it on camera too All right, that took a while. So, wipe that off again real quick. Probably shouldn't have left that open too. Always close your containers. Otherwise you, uh, you might risk doing things like spilling teak oil all over your workbench. I, I don't know why that thought came into my mind. <clears throat> get this out of the way so we've cleaned off the fingerboard we dressed the ends we've polished the frets and now it's time to actually put the strings on I'll admit uh, stringing a ukulele this would be the second time I have strung a ukulele I'm using these lovely strings right here 
not because I prefer the brand, not because I like the feel, but because a music store was changing ownership and they were being clearanced out. So I've got about five packs of them, super cheap. Uh, <clears throat> inexpensive. They, they are good enough that I wouldn't call them cheap, but they are inexpensive. All right, so that's what I have for you today. I had intended to have a little bit more, but ran into some tef technical difficulties and uh, some lessons learned. The main objective for this video, in addition to showing you know, some fret work and dealing with uh, fret sprout and some routine maintenance and that kind of thing, the main objective for this video was to check space, check cameras, check lighting, and to get all the stuff together needed for the Great Guitar Build-Off videos. I hope to have something fixed in the relatively near future, some of the lighting and power and a couple other things that I'll probably talk about at another juncture and, and, and to get all that ready for the next video, possibly not this coming weekend, but maybe, maybe the following weekend. We'll see. Depends on time and schedules. So I hope you had fun. If you have any feedback, don't forget to leave that in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you if you really didn't like it, go ahead, give it the thumbs down. I can take it. Uh, either way, hit subscribe if you haven't already, so that way you'll know when the next video comes out, and uh, you, 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 it will it will be better. Have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.